Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rogue Tech, where we are currently working on a few repairs here. I'd like to get all of these done or very close to it before the financial report here, and I do think that that's a possibility. So let's go ahead and tick forward and get these repairs underway. Rain will be back in three days. That's okay. We don't really care about that. Obviously, the Fafnir is not going to be ready by then, but that's okay. We're going to go for this because Taboo is from the periphery. Fantastic. Taboo is now in high spirits, and our morale is maxed, so that's okay. The Battlemaster will be done in just four days. The Bull Shark, Salamander, perfect. One day remaining, and we can deploy. This is what we want to see. So, we're going to hop then into the mech bay and make sure that everything is ship shape. It should be. Indeed it is. That's great. I would potentially like to think about refitting the longbow a little bit with the ELRMs. I feel like that would be good. But for now, we're not going to do that. I want to hop into the barracks and do a little bit of mech warrior promotion here. I think that we should have a couple available, or at least one. Uh, let's see. All of these guys, except Chronic Toast, are maxed. Yeah, Chronic Toast is now also maxed. Beautiful. So that is good to do. Good to know. And we're going to head down here. Poet is Commander. still a ways away. And Taboo is able to get any of these. We're going to go for tactics. Fantastic. So Taboo is also close to max. He needs about 48,000 XP. 48,600 to be precise. He has almost 10% of that already. So that's not bad. We're going to hop into the command center here. We're still looking to build up our funds and not do anything too tremendously difficult, but we'd also like to get that railgun ammo. Recovery, battle. We'd like to do something with a turret. Assassinate, duo duel. Eh, none of that is great. Target acquisition, blackout, assassinate, destroy base, but that's a nine skull. And it's against Comstar. I think we're going to pass on that for now. <laughs> we'll come back to those ideas a little later. I still want to... This is a tonnage maximum. What is the tonnage maximum here? This is not actually what we're going to be at here. I just want to see what the tonnage max is. 500? Yeah, I think I'll pass on that. So... I don't want to do anything too tremendously cataclysmically difficult right now. I want to build up our funds back to around 10 million, and I'd love to get our hands on the ammo for a railgun. I would also really, really like to get the ELRMs properly mounted on the longbow, but that's not really a thing to do right now, in my opinion. So instead, we might do this honor guard against the Lyrans. That might not be too bad. It's good pay. And that's a duo duel. I mean, we could probably hammer through this pretty quickly. In theory. But I think we're going to avoid it for now. And I'd like to do maybe this battle over here. So this is going to be a free priority salvage here. That's great. That gives us almost 2 million sea bills. I think that we're probably going to not bring the Battlemaster, and instead we're going to bring in the Mauler. So we'll drop that. And who do we have that pilots a Mauler? Do we have anybody with Mauler affinities? Actually, I don't know that. I don't think we do. Uh, that's correct, we don't. Okay, so I'll just put Succubus in there for now, because that's where the cursor was. It doesn't matter. These are all maxed, and they're all identical except for Coldfire. So that'll be fine. We'll go ahead and deploy that. Yeah, the Mauler is a little underweight. Yeah, Darius is a moron. So we are going to proceed here. Excellent. So this is a 735 ton lance at this point. Of course, our max is 800. So we could theoretically be bringing a 65 ton vehicle as well. That's something to think about, actually. Having, like, a lance of vehicles to pad out the remaining weight. We wouldn't bring the whole lance, obviously. But we would just bring, like, whatever mech we needed to pad out the lance. So it, we would have, like, a 70-tonner, like, a 65-tonner, maybe a 60-tonner, and a 55. I don't know. Something along those lines. That might... 
that might be pretty expensive to maintain. We'd, we'd have to think about that. But I do think that that's an interesting concept, especially if those are like artillery or otherwise indirect fire vehicles. That wouldn't be awful. But for now, we need to destroy enemy forces. Within the last three months, the Lyran Commonwealth has struck our facilities, personnel, and supply convoys over half a dozen times. My superiors at the Combine leadership would like to even the score. We'd like to hire you to find a Lyran Lance and destroy it to demonstrate we are not without military resources on Alula Astralis. If they want to show military strength here in Alula Astralis, we can do that for them. Indeed we can, Darius. Indeed we can. So I'm not expecting this to be terribly difficult. This is against the Steiners. Online. All systems nominal. So I mean, we're expecting like eight atlases, but <laughs> it should be fine. Command what do we actually got? Initiated. Do we have allies? Acquire target lance. They probably have reinforcements. We do have allies, so they definitely have reinforcements then. We could deploy down on the road and advance quickly, or we could deploy out over here and have cover and probably better LOS on them. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Okay. What do they have? We immediately see an Orion. I'm picking up a new sensor trace. Looks like enemy reinforcements. Well, that's rude. That's very rude. They dropped that right in the middle there. That did a lot of damage, actually. That was a lot of armor softening. We don't exactly know where that thing is. It came from out over this way. It's a pretty high priority target for us. But they've got a sniper artillery out there. It wasn't a long Tom. We can... Uh, we can be happy about that. The longbow can make its way up. Do we get LOS if we sprint? We do. So that actually gives us eyes on this Padilla. That is where our artillery is going to be going for sure. Technically, I should probably call it a Padilla, but sure. 26.4 and 12.1. That is actually a long Tom. Okay. I'm going to Warlord it. I want that artillery off the field. Odds are not great, but we're going to start working on that Padilla. Cool. So our friend the Dragonfire moves up. Not a lot getting done there. That's a Jess 3. It fires at the Dragonfire. That's okay. What else do they have over there? We know they've got a Warhawk. That guy's going to run pretty hot. Not exactly in LOS right now, but yeah, you can see. Well, actually, no, he didn't overheat from that. Oh, they're plasma cannons and an ER PPC. Okay, sure. Three plasma cannons and an ER PPC will do that. Our salamander, I would love to get proper LOS here. It doesn't exist. Sad. We're going to have to sprint it out over here, and we're going to call that good for now. Okay, so let's see what the Asura here does. Fires on the Warhawk with its own Plasma Cannon, and actually, that's really good. Hitting it with the Plasma Cannon and starting a fire there is very, very solid for us. So the Corsair is going to move up over this way. We're trying to spread out a little bit for their Long Tom, but ideally, we just kill the Long Tom before it shoots again. That's the idea here. So we're going to hit this guy with our Confirmed. Thumpers. Thumpers are not the greatest artillery. But we did some decent armor damage there. Okay, our ally moves up, doesn't do anything of note. Next Setting up is going to be our mauler. Maulers are, of course, direct fire only. Copy that. So we'll move up here and see what our hit odds are like. 51 on that Warhawk. On the Cataphract, it is 23.8. Okay. We'll Warlord it, and we're firing on that Warhawk. Confirm. Sadly, we missed both Gauss there. That's unfortunate. Okay, what else do they have out there? That's the Orion moving. And it did not fire. Waiting for orders. Fascinating. 
The Madcap Mark II is going to position right here. It could fire on the Orion or on the Warhawk. Warhawk's the higher hit odds. So we'll go ahead and go for that. This is going to be a big old armor strip here. We could theoretically kill the Warhawk, but I think that's pretty unlikely. Solid armor strip there and an injury resistance, I guess. Our allied dragon moves up. Or dragon slayer, rather. That's a victor. Aye, aye. The Annihilator is going to position out over here, where hopefully it won't stray shot. And actually, yeah, the HDRs are a pretty good chance here. So let's fire on the Warhawk. Again, we could theoretically kill it. Targeting for an alpha strike. Structure exposure and a lot of damage to that Warhawk. Orders. Our boar's head moves up. The Long Tom has to be our target here. There's no way around it. We will also Warlord to boost those odds. It's still got 500 armor on that Padilla. Firing full complement on enemy. Okay. We've stripped off virtually half of its armor. Okay, we see a Warhammer 2C over there that did take a little bit of artillery right. damage. That's not too bad. The Bull Shark is going to step over here. And we're going to continue dropping artillery on their Padilla. That's got to go. We're going to Warlord it to boost that up a bit. And fire. On target. That's a pretty good hit with the Long Tom. The Padilla is not dead, but its armor is very low. When does it get to fire this round is the question. It was very early last time. Yeah, it's right away. It fires on our Corsair. Ooh, that was a really good shot by them, actually. The Corsair would have been a good target for us, but they absolutely missed the Corsair and dropped it right smack in the middle of all of us. That's really unfortunate, but it is what it is. They've done a lot of armor strip. Their artillery has gotten good usage, but we're still okay here. Yep, the Mauler is fine. Light damage, holding firm. So this is phase 17. Oh, the Orion has battle armor on it. I didn't realize that. That's good to know. The Cataphract moves up and does not fire. Standing At this by. point, our Salamander is going to move up to here. Now, I feel like the Salamander is actually overkill on the Warhawk. Yeah, because I want to Warlord this and I want to fire AX rounds. Not on the Warhawk, but on the... Orion. Light him up. Engaging. That's a lot of damage there. Critical hit. And a lot of damage to the battle armor as well. So the dragon fire moves up, shoots at the Jess 3, doesn't really get any damage done there. This guy's off the map. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> that's very interesting. Yeah, this archer is definitely off the map. Okay. Well, phase 16, they're going to move their Orion and their Jess 3. So they shoot at the dragon fire. No problem there. And actually, they stack together with the Padilla. I like this. The Orion moves up. Shoots at the Azura. Not who it should have shoot shot at there, but I like it. That's good. Next up is going to be our longbow, which is going to stay where it's at and otherwise fire out at the Padilla, I think. Yes, we're going to fire at the Padilla here. It's only 21% hit odds, and we're not going to fire this LRM because of heat from the long tom. But let's go ahead and strip additional armor off of him. His armor is very low. Our friend the Mjolnir moves up there doesn't get anything done. Their Warhawk moves in, goes for the, our friend the Dragonfire. Doesn't really do much there, in all honesty. So that's fine. Awaiting orders. Our Mauler is going to want to close in here. Can we move up to here if we sprint? We can. So we're going to do exactly that. 44%, 51%, 31 I think we'll fire on the Orion here. Our hit odds aren't the best, but we'll take them. And we're going to have to not fire these lasers due to heat. Everything missed. Sad. Not shocking, 
but sad. Okay, what's our ally gonna do? Also going for the Warhawk. I like it. Shoulder destruction there and overheats the Warhawk. Pretty solid. Ysira moves in, of course, at Ace Pilots. Base 14. So there is still one thing that we don't see. And it's right here. I'm taking heavy hits, Commander. Okay. I can't Interesting. Much more of this. So the Corsair is Under going to fire. fire on the Padilla, of course. Copy that. One bad shot, one okay shot. The Dragon Slayer Victor moves up and does not fire. What else do we have? Standing by. We've got our Mad Cat Mark II. The Mad Cat Mark II is going to position up over here. Location confirmed. And that, I think, is going to go for the kill on that Warhawk. I don't want that Warhawk to exist anymore. And we'll see if we manage to get the kill here. Upper leg destruction, a lot of weapons destroyed there. Not quite a knockdown, though. Okay, they've got some heavy lasers out there. Good to know. We're okay for now. Yes, Commander. Our Annihilator is going to position up over here where we're safer from stray shots. I'm not going to say we're safe, but we're safer. <laughs> and we're going to fire on their Warhawk. Ooh, that was a solid set of hits there. We did miss one of the heavy gauss, but that Warhawk is not doing well. Beautiful. So it's down to one health at this point. And our Bull Shark is going to position out over here. We're going to finish off that Padilla. I do not want that Long Tom to hit us again. There we go. The Padilla is out of here. Now we can focus on better targets. Yeah. That would be nice. So phase 10, what are they going to move? That is actually reserving the battle arm. Standing by. Okay. Honestly, I kind of feel like we shoot at the Orion here, direct fire with our artillery. And see if we can eliminate their uh, battle armor. Primitive. So we eliminated the Orion, for sure. I think the battle armor is also dead. I think. <laughs> we'll see. The Salamander is going to advance over here. I still kind of feel like the Salamander is overkill on the Warhawk. I would like it to go for the Cataphract with the AX rounds. And this would not be able to be, to be Warlorded. But we're not going to fire the medium lasers, obviously. Confirmed. Whoa, that's just a straight-up one-shot on the Cataphract. Straight into a UAC-5 ammo explosion. We'll take that. That's, that's very nice. So the Corsair at this point is going to start firing out over this direction, but there's not really an amazing target. Honestly, maybe we go for the Warhawk with Shape Charge or something. Yeah, I think we do. Okay, I'm on it. Nice. Warhawk's out of here. Tango down. That's perfect. So that's actually one full lance gone. Awaiting now we know it. there's still something here. The Mauler is going to position up over here, and we're going to fire on whoever we have the best hit odds on. They're not going to be great out at this range. The Archer is off the map, and we don't even get hit odds there. Yeah, that's strange. Okay, so we're going to fire on the Warhammer 2C. We got a structure exposure right off the bat there. That was pretty lucky. That's not in the CT, but that's okay. Orders. The longbow is going to try to move out of the fire I'm here. 57%. Once again, the archer... Oh, we do have hit odds on the archer here. Okay. So I think the warhammer is the obvious choice, and... Yeah, we can't afford the heat. So we're just we going go. to try to do a little crit fishing here. Triple clan double heat sink destruction. Reporting. Critical hit. Not bad. Keep an eye on my heat, Commander. 
Yeah, we know there's still a unit over there. Damage is minor. Commander. But that wasn't much, in all honesty. So, next up is going to be our Madcap Mark II, and now we do see this mech. Move into position. It's a Catapult II, running stealth. Cool. So, we don't really have great hit odds here. We're going to do something kind of like this and just attempt to see what we can get done. We got a little bit of damage in there. That'll do. Ooh, this is an awkward angle. Okay, there we go. And we're going to move up our Annihilator. The Annihilator is actually going to get LOS here. I don't expect much hit odds. 0.9%. Yeah, I'm actually going to just be done with the Annihilator there for now. The Bull Shark is going to step up over here, and I think the Bull Shark is going to fire out over this direction at either the Warhammer or the Jess. I think the Warhammer is more likely to be killed here. Roger that. That's a torso destruction. Going to be at least a knockdown. Critical hit. Beautiful. So that's good. At this point, the boar's head is going to move. Now, the boar's head, I kind of actually want to shoot at the catapult too. We're going to have to fire this in artillery mode, of course. It wasn't a great sniper artillery shot. I think that might have splash damaged us. We didn't get a report about it, though. So the Azura is going to move up. And that's not going to shoot at anything. Interesting choice. The Jess moves in and goes for a longbow. Firing tandem rounds. Getting that through arm. Armor breach. Internal damage. It didn't get any crits, so that's lucky. The Dragonfire moves up. It's got no heat, really. And it fires its gauss, but misses. Okay, that's fine. Next up is going to be that archer. And the longbow is fine against non-tandem rounds, for sure. Those tandem rounds are a little spooky. I'm not going to lie. The Mjolnir moves up and doesn't do anything of note. The Dragon Slayer moves up and doesn't do anything of note. Now the Warhammer will get up. And I do expect the Warhammer to attack our longbow as well. They've been focusing on that pretty hard. It actually just walks away. Okay, that's fine. Confirm. So the longbow could fire on the catapult with 23% hit odds. We could fire on the warhammer with 26. The Jess 3 with 18. Or the archer with 38. And the archer with 38 is the plan. We're going to warlord that. Bringing that up to 44. And we're going to fire Artemis rounds. Bringing that up to 51.3. It's a slight overheat, but we'll accept it. We're also going to vigilance the longbow. They have attacked it a fair amount. Okay. I'm on him. Let's see what we get here. Okay, some armor damage there. That'll do. Yeah, you're fine. The salamander is going to close in on the catapult. Now, we're not going to fire AX rounds on this guy. That's for sure. We're going to fire improved rounds, and we can't go get away with firing our ATM. That's okay as well. We're just going to fire the MRM-40 and see how much we get. That's a knockdown. Beautiful. So with that catapult knocked down, we should have a much easier time hitting it. The Corsair is going to go for artillery mode high explosive on the Jess. For sure. I don't want to take more of those tandem rounds if we can help it. That wasn't much damage to the Jess, but it'll do. The Madcap Mark II is going to close in on this catapult. And we're going to hit this guy just as hard as we can. It's not tremendously hard. But we'll chunk through his armor. Excellent. Aye, aye. Our Annihilator is also going to close in over here. And our hit odds are actually non-abysmal here. I was expecting them to be lower. But this is fine. 32% on the HGRs? Let's do it. Copy that. We do miss all of it. I'm not shocked, but it was better odds than I expected. 
Phase 18, they have two movers. Let's see what they do. The Jess closes in a bit, fires on the longbow. Still firing tandem rounds. Internal structure damaged. Okay, that's fine. Commander. The Bull Shark is going to move up over here. Rolling. And that Jess is actually fairly closely located to the Warhammer 2C. I love it. We're going to drop a Long Tom on it. Kaboom. And we also damaged the Warhammer there. Now we didn't kill the Warhammer, but that's fine. They're shooting at our longbow, as expected. And next up, Commander. our Mauler is going to close in over here. Now, we could fire on the Catapult 2 on 32% hit odds, or we could fire on the Archer on 29. Technically, the Catapult 2 is the better target. We will Warlord that. And let's see what we can get here in terms of heat capacity. Yeah, this is fine. Nice. That eliminated the Catapult. That's perfect. One less target. Yes, Commander. Okay, so our Boar's Head is going to continue hitting that Jess 3. All weapons are go. We got a little bit of damage onto the Warhammer there, but not a lot. The Jess 3 does have structure exposure, and I was hoping that that would kill it, but no such luck. Maybe our allies can finish it off. Well, the Asura doesn't fire, so that one's not going to be a thing. The Mjolnir also doesn't fire, nor does the Dragon fire, nor does the Dragon Slayer. Okay, so our allies don't even try. The Warhammer comes back up, shoots at the Mag Cat, doesn't get any damage done. So, I mean, these guys are super duper dead. They just don't know it yet. Look how close these guys are actually physically located. The longbow is going to go ahead and fire on the Jess. That's the larger of the threats. And I do expect to kill here. There we go. Target down. So the Jess is out of here. The archer closes in a bit, fires on the Azura. We like that. That is good. Commander. The Salamander is going to close in over here. On the move. It can get a free kill on this Warhammer. Like, this is this is super easy. Got it. There we go. The Warhammer is out of here. Target eliminated. And all that's left is the Archer. Standing now, the Archer is way out there. We're going to move the Corsair up over here, and we're going to start hitting it with artillery, of course. Firing. Okay, we made it unsteady. We got a couple of solid thumper hits there. I'm actually Ready. surprised. The Mad Cat Mark II is going to sprint up over this way and sink its heat. It's not in range, naturally. Ready for orders. The Bull Shark is going to move up and continue to pummel the armor on that archer. We're out of range of the LRM-20, but we can still fire the Long Tom and get a pretty decent hit there. That does result in a knockdown on that archer. I like it. The pilot is currently bleeding out. We'll see Standing if they uh, keep doing that. And what are our hit odds here? 44. Surprisingly solid. And we do manage to hit one of those. That's a big deal, actually. Awaiting a lot order. of armor damage there. Our Annihilator is going to sprint up here. Going to full it doesn't have a target. That's okay. Better. Our boar's head is going to continue to hammer that archer. And we could easily see a kill here. And there we go. Actually, that didn't kill. That zoom out usually means a kill. But no, not in that case, I guess. We didn't even break the armor, technically. There we go. Now that's a kill. Fantastic. That was actually lethal damage on the cockpit. Okay. <laughs> Well, that'll do. Successful. Let's get out of here. So that Long Tom definitely dealt more damage than I would have liked for it to do in the first couple of rounds. No doubt about that. But we'll see how long it actually ends up taking to repair. Other than those couple of Long Tom hits, we really didn't take that much damage. It wasn't too bad.
So let's go ahead and get our salvage done here. 1.7 mil in profit before repairs. The longbow is going to need some repairs for sure, and all of our mechs are going to need a small amount of repairs. But that shouldn't be too bad in theory. I don't know that we're super interested in any of these mech parts. Although maybe the Padilla part. Because I was talking about filling out our capacity. So we'll go ahead and take that. We get a sheathed beacon. We do have one of those, but we'll keep it. A heat sink kit, again, we'll keep that. Incendiary MRMs, we've got two tons of those. We'll just get rid of those. That shouldn't be too bad. So I do expect our repairs to be a little on the high side, but not super high. I don't actually have a good feeling for where this is going to be. I'm guessing maybe around 450,000, but that's just a complete spitball. It kind of depends right? Like, it depends a lot. I don't have a good feel of how much those two long tom shots are going to cost us. They are going to cost us. There's no doubt about it. But how much? That's a good question. It is around time to put a cut in here, so once we know how much Yang is going to charge us, I will go ahead and do that. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and let's see what Yang's got for us here. Come on, Yang. There we go. 322k. That was actually less than I anticipated. But like I said, I didn't really have a solid feel for how that was going to be. But I'm quite pleased with that. That is not bad at all. So the longbow is going to take a while, as is the Fafnir. And beyond that, honestly, this isn't too bad. But this is going to be a fairly lengthy repair process. I mean, we're obviously going to have to take the financial report. But that'll be a next episode thing. I will see you guys next time.